This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. When you sign up at the link in the description, you'll also gain access to Nebula, the streaming video platform that Real Life Lore is a part of. Follow the link below to start your free trial today. The United States military is composed of almost 800 military bases in more than 70 countries and territories across the world. Most of these bases were acquired after World War II when traditional colonial powers such as Great Britain and France were in the midst of decolonization. While all of these bases hold significant strategic importance to the United States military, few hold as much importance or secrecy as the tiny island of Diego Garcia, or are as involved in so much controversy. Diego Garcia is a coral atoll in the largest and southernmost member of the Chagos Archipelago located in the central Indian Ocean. This area is home to over 1,000 individual islands and is composed of seven distinct atolls. Diego Garcia itself is a narrow strip of land that measures 63 kilometers in length and nearly encloses a lagoon that is 21 kilometers long and up to 10 kilometers wide at its widest point. This open access to the lagoon on the north end of the island allows for easy access to the naval port for inbound and outbound ships delivering supplies and personnel. Although cars on the island drive on the right side of the road, this island is not considered American soil. You may be surprised to find out that Diego Garcia is actually one of the final colonial remnants of the British Empire. The United Kingdom today considers the island a member of the British Indian Ocean Territory which is comprised of the entire Chagos Island chain. The island was first discovered by Diego Garcia de Moguer of Spain before becoming a French colony in 1793. After the Napoleonic Wars, the Treaty of Paris passed control of the island to Great Britain in 1814 before being reclassified as part of the British Indian Ocean Territory in 1965. The United States' involvement on the island can be traced back to the 1960s as they recognized the strategic importance of the Indian Ocean region was growing. The Indian Ocean, which stretches from the Persian Gulf and the coast of East Africa to the Malay Archipelago and the shores of Australia, covers more than 70 million square kilometers. Today, the nations that border this ocean make up roughly one-third of the world's population. Not to mention the fact that these countries are extremely rich in natural resources, as this geographical space contains roughly 62% of the world's proven oil reserves, 35% of its gas, 40% of its gold, 60% of its uranium, and 80% of all the world's diamonds. The Indian Ocean also contains some of the world's most important shipping lanes. Most notably, it is a key transit route for oil from the Persian Gulf to reach consumers around the world. 20% of the world's oil supply and 93% of oil exported from the Persian Gulf transits by tanker through the Strait of Hormuz and off through the Suez Canal, around the Cape of Good Hope, or somewhere east towards Asia. As the British decided to withdraw from major military bases east of the Suez by 1971, there was great fear of a power vacuum of sorts developing within the Indian Ocean. At the same time, the Cold War was already underway and an increased Soviet presence was already being felt in East Africa and the Gulf of Aden regions. It was at this point that the United States recognized the need to acquire an Indian Ocean base to facilitate local operations. The U.S. Navy recognized the vulnerability of shore-based facilities and instead looked toward the sparsely populated islands of the British Indian Ocean Territory. Although the base today has quite a large amount of infrastructure, the original plan was for a relatively small communication outpost for the Indian Ocean operations. However, as the Cold War progressed, more and more facilities were added and today it contains a large naval port capable of accommodating aircraft carriers, a two-mile long runway, and typically holds between three and 5,000 service members and contractors at any one time. Where originally the fear was that a naval power vacuum would occur, this was soon replaced by fears of militarism as both the American and Soviet navies were deploying more and more ships to the region. Today, Diego Garcia serves four primary functions. The first one being that it operates as the staging ground for one-third of all strategic sealift ships which are located in the lagoon. 
These ships support rapid deployment of equipment, supplies, and ammunition to support all branches of the armed forces during rapid deployment scenarios. Secondly, it provides a docking location for U.S. Navy fast attack submarines and surface ships that need refueling and additional supplies. Next, Diego Garcia's airfield supports tactical and long-range aircraft that have heavily supported military campaigns in both Iraq and Afghanistan. And lastly, it supports the U.S. military worldwide communication effort within the Indian Ocean region. Entry into Diego Garcia is extremely limited and for authorized visitors only. No commercial flights into or out of Diego Garcia exist. However, it is considered an emergency landing location for commercial aircraft transiting across the Indian Ocean. Transit in and out of the island is performed by military transport aircraft as well as regular supply ships going to and from the base. Although sailing around the British Indian Ocean Territory is permitted with the right approvals, don't bother getting too close to the island as it has a strictly enforced three nautical mile perimeter that you are absolutely forbidden from entering. Since the island is owned by the British, there are British representatives that are there responsible for law and order on the island including British Customs personnel for entering and exiting the island, Royal Overseas Police Officers, and a contingency of Royal Marines who patrol and protect the entire British Indian Ocean Territory. Although the island has provided the United States military with extensive access to the Indian Ocean, it is not without controversy. Before the US and UK involvement with the island, a group of indigenous inhabitants occupied Diego Garcia known as the Chago Science. The origins of these people date back to when France controlled the island in the 18th century when the island's first inhabitants were enslaved and shipped from Madagascar and Mozambique to work on native coconut plantations owned by the French. Despite this, however, the Chagosians developed a pleasant lifestyle, their own version of the Creole language, and generally led a very peaceful way of life. However, in 1967, that peaceful way of life began to be torn apart by imposing plans from the US and the UK. It was at this point that the US had an interest in the island and made a deal with the United Kingdom to lease a portion of the island for its new military base. The US was fully ready to move in and create its new outpost, however, there was just one problem. The 3,000 or so Chego Science who lived on the islands did not want to leave. Unfortunately for the natives, life gradually became more and more difficult. In 1971, when the US Navy arrived to begin clearing the beaches for construction, the evictions grew more and more urgent as food and medical supplies were restricted and more and more people opted to leave the island. Finally, the last inhabitants were forcibly removed and shipped off to the Mauritius or Seychelles Islands and have spent the last five decades battling the British and US government for the right to return. Last year in May, the United Kingdom received what can be compared to official eviction orders to leave the island. In a United Nations General Assembly vote calling for the return of the island to the Chagosians, the US and British were on the losing side of a 116 to 6 vote with only Hungary, Israel, Australia, and the Maldives joining their side. The ruling by the United Nations is not legally binding and up until this point has been completely ignored by both Britain and the United States. Despite no action being taken yet, the rulings are significant for the Chagosian people as this is something they have been campaigning for legally for decades. For Chago Science, it's not so much about having the base removed, but simply being allowed to return to live and visit their homeland in the future. All told, Diego Garcia is an interesting island with a very controversial history, and a great way to learn more about strange places like this is to head over to CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the online streaming platform with thousands of top quality documentaries, and it is only $20 for a full year subscription. For less than $2 per month, you can view top rated documentaries from people like Chris Hadfield, Stephen Hawking, Jane Goodall, and many more. Best of all, if you sign up for an annual subscription to CuriosityStream with the link in the description 
or by going to curiositystream.com forward slash real life lore 2, you'll also gain access to Nebula. Nebula is the new video streaming platform made possible by many of your favorite YouTube creators. With all real life lore videos ad free and a ton of awesome original content from people like Wendover Productions and Real Engineering, CuriosityStream helps to make all of this awesome original educational content possible. So go ahead and give CuriosityStream a try and get free access to Nebula when you visit curiositystream.com forward slash real life lore 2. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video.